Hi everyone, welcome to prompt number 40. I drew a regular ant. Let's get into it. And today we have, oh, view out a window. Okay, um, let's get crazy with this one. So right away, my initial idea of a view out a window would be having a normal setting. And then if you looked out the window, there would be something weird happening whether it be a giant monster attack or just like the earth was ending, something like that. So my first sketch was just a girl standing at her kitchen with the window in the background. She was drinking her morning coffee and little did she know there was a dinosaur in her yard eating her kids. <laughs> you know me, always torturing children on this channel. The second sketch wasn't that much different. It was more of a view out of one of those really expensive roomy apartments in a city, overlooking the city and having something like another monster, I guess, attacking while a couple looked over it. Like, well, I guess we're going to die now. The third and final sketch is the one that I ended up illustrating, so I guess I'll talk more about that now. It's similar to the second sketch where it is overlooking the city, but it's not a couple standing in an expensive apartment building. This time I wanted to draw a girl sitting in one of those, I guess, window seats that everyone wants to sit and draw in or sit and read a book in, but they only exist in movies. Seriously, I've never seen one of these in real life, but I've also never lived in a two-story house. And before all the comments saying that they have one of those window seat things. When I was putting the pencil down for this illustration, I originally had something else down aside from this demon dog thingy. I'll show you a clip here. This is what I originally had. If you know what this is a reference to in my previous videos, let me know in the comments below. In the end, it just wasn't feeling right and I decided to stick with the demon dog thing. I guess I didn't want too much competition between the background and the foreground and having that interest of the Statue of Liberty climbing the Empire State Building probably would have been too much, I think. I don't know, something about it just seemed a little too distracting, which is why I ended up going with this darker demon dog in the background where everything was just dark and ominous in the background. So as usual, I wanted to play with, you guessed it, the framing of this illustration. I used a combination of blue masking, nope. I used a combination of blue painter's tape and masking fluid to make sure that I didn't get any paint in the areas that I wasn't painting at the moment. I also just wanted to make sure that the borders for the window screen thingy were very smooth. At first I thought about using the masking fluid to do the cross in the middle and the outside, but then I thought, why not just cut pieces of tape? That is so much more easier to get a straight line. And that's what I did. To be honest, looking at the finished image, it probably would have looked better if I did a full background. It would have been more interesting to see more of this girl's personality by putting, I guess, objects that she had on shelves nearby or just decorating the room and actually seeing around instead of just having this white blankness. But at the time, I thought it would be really interesting to have the whiteness of the page not only go from the edges, but then also go in through the window. So it's just something I was playing around with and I guess lesson learned. Sometimes it's better to have a full background than to mess around with things like this, but that's why I like to try new things. I wanted to make sure what was happening through the window was very dark in contrast to the girl in the foreground. I put as many layers as I could of a dark, dark watercolor to make sure that this ominous, shadowy figure and the dark sky and the buildings and everything about the background were just very dark and very creepy but not so dark that you couldn't see what was happening. And I also wanted to make sure that that spooky character in the background did pop. And if I made the background too dark, then he would kind of blend in and you couldn't tell what was going on. And just to add emphasis for how creepy it is and maybe that there were flames in the city, who knows, I put a little bit of red going up into the sky and I think that really helped make it look just that much creepier. So after I was done working the background, it was time to pick up the tape and the masking fluid to reveal if it worked. Thank goodness it did because the whole time I was fearing that the paint wouldn't actually hold back all of it, but it did pretty good. Before I put any of the colors down for the girl, I planned out what I wanted to do in Photoshop because this is one of those illustrations where I wasn't feeling particularly inspired for her color palette and I wasn't really feeling anything. This always gets me concerned that it's going to be kind of a rainbowy, muddy mess, so I always like to plan them if I can. 
The main thing I knew I wanted to do was to make sure that she was very bright and a little bit more colorful than the background because I wanted to have that contrast between the spooky, dark monster that she was looking at and this bright, colorful person on the inside of this building. And because I gave her long hair, I wanted to avoid making her blonde because it reminded me too much of Rapunzel and I didn't want to go there. And when I want to do bright colors, my go-to hair color is, of course, red. Or orange? They're called redheaded. But I also don't really do a lot of blending with hair or I guess dyed hair. So I wanted to play around with her having a gradient hair going from orange to yellow or blonde. And that was a lot of fun to do because it's not something that I ever really do, I guess. And it's very pretty, I must say. I don't think I have entirely too much more to say about the process. So let's talk about why she's just staring at this monster in the background without a care in the world. I like to imagine that she lives in a world where superheroes exist, and this is something that probably happens often. Kind of like that dog barking in the background. It happens to me so often, I have decided to get over it and let it bark in my voiceover. Very professional. So this girl has woken up in the morning and she's drinking her coffee, only to find this monster in the background. She knows it's just another day in the city and that the superhero will come save the day, so she settles down, drinking her coffee, and she just waits to watch the show. This scenario really made me wonder what all of the people in these superhero worlds think. Everyone knows cities are always being attacked and being rescued by superheroes. Why don't they just move? Or do you think a lot of them do the same? They get their morning coffee and they just watch it happen. But then what happens if their building is the one getting attacked? And then they die. Well, this just took a turn for the worst. Let me know in the comments below, if you live in a city that was always being attacked by a supervillain, would you stay or would you move? Please excuse the dog that has been barking throughout the whole video. I hope you enjoyed this prompt and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Come on, doggy, one more for the road. Good doggy.